We previously introduced the idea of the basis of a vector space, link in the description to that lesson. We saw how each vector space has many different possible bases, and each vector in the space can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors in any basis that we choose. When we think about R squared, for example, the xy plane, we generally think of this space as being built out of a unit vector along the x-axis and a unit vector along the y-axis. And then any point in this space can be described with a coordinate pair, telling us how far to go along the x-axis and how far to go along the y-axis to get to the point. But what would happen to this coordinate pair if we change the basis of the space? That's the question we're going to deal with today by introducing the idea of the coordinates of a vector relative to an arbitrary basis. Two quick things before we introduce that definition. First, the uniqueness of basis representations. If we have a basis for a vector space V, then every vector in that vector space can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis in exactly one way, which we may write like this. So if we have a basis for a vector space V, then certainly by definition, any vector in V can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis. But furthermore, that expression is in fact unique. It can be done in exactly one way. Link in the description to my lesson proving this fact. And one other thing, so far we've considered bases to be sets, and hence they have no order. But if we consider a basis in which the listed order is important, we call that an ordered basis. So for example, here's a basis S. Now if I write this other set, S prime, which contains the same vectors, but in a different order, well, this would be the same basis, but it would be a different ordered basis. This has V2 and V1 swapped. Still the same vectors, so it is the same basis, but it's a different ordered basis. You can imagine why this is relevant. When we think of coordinates as we traditionally have in, say, the xy plane, we also call coordinates an ordered pair or an ordered triplet. The ordered pair 1, 2 refers to the x-coordinate first and the y-coordinate second. Order is certainly important when it comes to coordinates. With that said, let's introduce the definition of the coordinates of a vector relative to a basis. Here is our definition. If S is an ordered basis for a vector space V, and this is the expression for a vector V in terms of the basis S, then the scalars that build this linear combination, C1, C2, and so on through Cn, are called the coordinates of V relative to the basis S. Of course, their order matters. C1 comes first. That's the coefficient of V1, the first vector in the ordered basis. C2 comes second. That's the coefficient of V2, the second vector in the ordered basis, and so on. If we take all of these coefficients, C1 through Cn, in their appropriate order, that describes a vector in Rn. The vector that's made up of those coordinates is called the coordinate vector of V relative to the basis S. We could, of course, change the basis, and if we did, we would still be able to express the vector V as a linear combination of the new basis, but naturally it would have different coefficients, and hence we would have a different coordinate vector relative to that new basis. And this is how we denote the coordinate vector V relative to S. It's not just V, it's not just the vector V, it's the coordinates of V relative to the basis S. So these parentheses around it tell us we're looking at a coordinate vector, not the vector itself. And the subscript tells us what the basis is. That's of course important because a different basis would affect the coordinates. They would be different if there was a different basis. This idea of the coordinates of a vector relative to a basis let us think of any vector in the context of Rn. No matter what vector we have in whatever vector space we're considering, the coordinates of the vector relative to the basis will be real number coefficients, and so we'll make up a vector 
in Rn. This way we've been writing coordinate vectors so far is called the comma delimited form. It's notated with those parentheses, but it's also common that we will write them as column vectors in what we could call matrix form, where we have brackets used instead of parentheses, though note the S is still in the subscript, indicating the relevant basis that the coordinates are relative to. All right, time to look at some examples, beginning with the vector space of polynomials of degree at most n. Let's find the coordinate vector for the arbitrary polynomial, seen here, relative to the standard basis for Pn. We, of course, need to know that the standard basis for Pn is this set here, 1, x, x squared, all the way up through xn where, of course, the order is important. We go from degree 0 to degree 1, degree 2, up to degree n. So then, what's the coordinate vector for this arbitrary polynomial relative to this standard basis? Well, it's just how much 1 do we need, followed by how much x do we need, followed by how much x squared do we need, and so on. And it's clear to see from how this is written, we need c0 of 1, so c0 would be the first coordinate. We need c1 of x, so that would be the second coordinate. We need c2 of x squared, and so on. So the coordinate vector of a polynomial in Pn relative to the standard basis s is actually just its coefficients in order from the degree 0 coefficient to that degree n coefficient at the very end. Here's another example in the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices. Let's say we want to find the coordinate vector of this arbitrary 2 by 2 matrix relative to the standard basis for this vector space. The standard basis, hopefully you remember, just consists of all matrices like this, except alternating where that single entry of 1 is. Is. And with that in mind, it's easy to write this arbitrary 2 by 2 matrix as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, and it looks just like that. Each one of these entries, of course, gets its own standard basis vector and correspondingly gets its own term in the linear combination. So, what is the coordinate vector of A relative to the standard basis? Well, the first coordinate is a, that's how much of the first standard basis vector we need. The second coordinate is b, that's how much of the second standard basis vector we need, and so on. The third coordinate is c, and the fourth coordinate is d. And again, notice how this idea of a coordinate vector has put this 2 by 2 matrix in the context of, in this case, R4. All right, let's finish with a couple computational examples in R cubed. First, let's suppose we have this basis for R cubed, the basis consisting of these three vectors. You can verify that these do form a basis, but I can tell you that, yes, they do. And let's say we want to find the coordinates of this vector v relative to this non-standard basis. Note that if we were using the standard basis for R cubed, the coordinate vector of this vector v would actually just be the vector v. It's kind of a trivial example of coordinate vectors. So in the context of r cubed, we could write that the coordinate vector v relative to the, let's write sb for standard basis, since we already used s for something else here, this is actually just equal to the vector v, because v is already a member of rn. So again, relative to the standard basis in rn, a coordinate vector is actually just the vector itself. But on with this example and our non-standard basis. To find the coordinates of this vector relative to this basis, we need to express the vector v as a linear combination of the three basis vectors. Well, let's replace these vectors with their component forms. So here on the left, we have our vector v. And then v1, v2, and v3 have all been replaced with what they are equal to. Now we have to solve this equation for c1, c2, and c3. By equating components, this leads to a system of three equations. For example, for the first components to be equal, negative 8 must equal 3c1 plus 2c2 plus 1c3. 
And similarly, to get the second equation, we equate the second components. And to get the third equation, we equate those third components. This then leads to an augmented matrix for the system, and we can solve this using Gauss-Jordan elimination. Doing that, we arrive at this reduced row echelon matrix, which tells us C1 equals negative 3, C2 equals positive 2, and C3 equals negative 3. Hence, to write our vector v as a linear combination of these standard basis vectors, we need negative 3v1 plus 2v2 minus 3v3. And these three coefficients make up the coordinate vector relative to s. So the coordinate vector v relative to this basis s is the vector containing those three coefficients in order, negative 3, 2, and negative 3. Three. It's even easier to go the other direction. Suppose we wanted to find the vector in R cubed whose coordinate vector relative to the non-standard basis S we were just working with is 2, 1, negative 3. To do this, well, we just need to take 2 times V1 plus 1 times V2 minus 3 times V3. That will give us the actual vector v in R cubed that has this as its coordinate vector. So we know that v is 2 times v1 plus 1 times v2 minus 3 times v3 because we were given the coordinate vector relative to the basis s. The vectors v1, v2, and v3, as before, are seen here and we're just multiplying those vectors by the appropriate coordinates to arrive at this vector in R cubed. So this vector in R cubed has this as its coordinate vector relative to the basis S that we've been using. So that's an introduction to coordinate vectors relative to an arbitrary basis, some examples, and how to find the coordinate vectors relative to a non-standard basis. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.